Okay, so I will be talking about what we call the measures of center, and these should be familiar to you guys. Um, the mean, also known as average, the median, the mode, and the mid-range. So let's talk about the mean first. You probably have already determined um, a mean. You already know what a mean is or an average because you know how to find an average. What do you do? Naturally, you add up all the values in a set of data, and then you divide by the total number of values in that data set. Mathematically, this is what that looks like. This is a symbol that indicates a sum. Take the sum of all your values, so x represents each value, each data value, take the sum of all the data values and divide by n, which is the total number of data values in the data set. So number of values in the set of data. This indicates take a sum, and then x represents your data values. So add them all up, divide by the total number. This is what it looks like mathematically in our notation. You're going to get used to these type of uh, variables and symbols. A median, um, first you need to uh, list the values from least to greatest. And then take the middle. The very middle value. I'll do an example of each. Now, you know, obviously the middle value um, is dependent on the number of total values in your data set. So you could have an odd number or an even number. I'll show you um, both cases. The mode is the most repeated data value. And you can have um, bimodal data, which means two modes. You can have multimodal, which is more than two. And you can have um, no mode, which means that all the data values, all values are represented the same amount of time. Uh, represented an equal amount of times. Um, and then the mid-range is just the maximum data value plus the minimum data value divided by two. Okay, so these are called the measures of center. Um, I'll show you how to find each one. They're not hard. And what I'll do is I'll make up a random set of data. So let's just, I don't know, 23, 25, 27, 28, 29, 30, 60. Let me make sure you guys can see this. Making this up as I go, whatever. Um, not six comma, 60. Let's do 90, 92, 101, 87, blah. Whatever. Actually, let me just make it in order from least to greatest so we don't have to do that later because I'm going to need it from least to greatest when I uh, do my median. So let's just make it from least to greatest now so that I don't have to do it later. Um. Uh, let's just do 150 and 200. Okay, so um, let's start by finding the mean. Um, now, <clears throat> one more thing I want to talk about. One more thing I want to talk about is um, a way that we represent the sample mean. Um, You'll see it as x bar. I'm going to re, uh, repeat this later. x bar. x with a line over it. We say that as x bar and it means a sample mean. Um, all right. Uh, I'll come back to that. Let's find x bar, the sample mean for this set of data. So according to this formula, we need to add up all the values. So 23 plus 25 plus all the way to 200 divided by n, the total number of data values in your data set. So how many do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, divided by 12. So I'm going to get my calculator. Um, let's go ahead and add them all up. So 23 plus 25, let me move this over, plus 
27, I don't want to make a mistake, plus 28, plus 29, plus 30, plus 60, plus 90, plus 93, plus 101, plus 150, and I think there's one under there, plus 200. So the top is 856. So the sum of all those values is 856 out of 12. And so let's divide that by 12. I got 71.3333333. Now, I'm going to go ahead and round that to 71.3. So typically my round off rule for a mean is one more digit than represented in your data set. So my data set represent, you know, is represented in like tens place and ones place. So I'm going to round to the tenths place. So one more digit than represented in your data set. So <clears throat> I rounded to the nearest tenths place, and this is an approximate symbol. So my mean or my average of this data set is approximately 71.3. Um, let's find the median. Now the median is the middle, right? The middle data value, if it's listed from least to greatest, which it already is, which is awesome. So sometimes what students do is they cross off the outers, right? I'm trying to find the middle. So I'm just going to cross them off as I go to the center, right? And you'll notice that 30 and 60 are the two middle ones. Now I have an even number of data values. If I had an odd number of data values, let's say like 201 was here, then I would land at one of these numbers. But because it's an even number of data values, um, I have to go in between 30 and 60 to find the median, right? So again, if I had an odd number of data values, I would actually land at a number when I cross out all the outside ones. Something would be in the middle. But because I have an even number of data values, I have two numbers in the middle. So to find the median, if I have an even number of data values, I'm going to take the average of those two middle numbers or take, you know, find the middle of those two. So 30 plus 60 divided by 2, 45. So 45 is my median, and I'm going to say 45.0 to follow my round off rule. So my mean is 71.3, median 45, my mode. What is represented the most? So anything repeated here, so let me get rid of this red so we can see it. Anything repeated here, 23, nothing is really repeated, is it? Everything is represented or shown one time. So that means I have no mode. Nobody special, everybody's represented the same amount of times. I have no mode, um, nobody's repeated. So then let's do the median. What is the median? So the median I'm going to find by taking the maximum data value, adding the minimum data value, so the biggest value plus the smallest value, which is easy to determine if it's ordered, and then divided by 2 always. Uh, and let's just see what that is. So I have 200 plus 23, and then divided by 2, which gives me uh, 111.5. Now I don't need this approximate symbol because it is exactly... 111.5 um, and it's followed my round off rule. So these are the measures of center for this particular data set. Now that's it. Those are my measures of center. Mean, median, mode, and um, oh, mid-range. I'm sorry. I, think, I don't know if I said mid-range and I wrote median. This is a mid-range. Mean, median, mode, and mid-range. Mean, average, take the sum of all of them, divide by the total number of values you have. Median, um, take the middle, order them from least to greatest. If you have an odd number of data values, when you cross off the outer ones, you'll get to a middle number. If you have an even number of data values, then you'll have two in the middle, and you have to take the average of those two. Mode, you know, whatever's repeated the most, you might have um, more than one mode or no mode like this one. Everything is repeated the same number of times. And mid-range, just take the maximum plus the minimum and divide by two, and those are your measures of, measures of center. Um, <clears throat> there's one thing that I want to talk about real quick. We talked about sample versus population in the beginning of this class um, and statistic versus parameter. And this is where it's coming up again. This is very important. You're going to see this later in statistics. Um, everybody that takes statistics. Obviously, if you remember, a population is the big dog, right? <laughs> That's what I call it. It's the big group. And a sample is a piece of that group. A parameter is a number or value calculated from a population. And a statistic is a number or value calculated from a sample. 
So when I'm talking about a mean, I have different notation for a sample mean versus a population mean. So let me actually, my sample mean is represented by x bar. I saw that here, right, because I had a sample, so I used x bar. My population mean, every time I write pop, guys, population, is represented by what we call mu. This is a Greek letter called mu. It looks like a u with like this extra thing here, or a fancy m. It's called mu, and it is a population mean. And a population mean is the average or the mean of, from a population. The x bar is a mean or average from a sample. They're calculated the same way, but obviously this comes from a population and this comes from a sample. You need to know if I write x bar what it means. You need to know if I write mu what it means. I'm not going to always tell you what that means. You have to know your notation. You have to understand how to read a, um, read a, a formula. You have to know what these variables mean. You have to know what these mean. Okay, so very, very important. You're going to see that a lot. X bar is a sample mean. Mu is a population mean.